Three years into his tenure at Christian Dior, Raph Simmons has brought a jolt of energy and modernity to the venerable French couture brand. With his personal passions for music and art, as well as a newfound interest in the business side of the fashion industry, Simmons is now hitting his stride and finding comfort in his role at the helm of one of fashion's most storied brands. In an in-depth interview on the occasion of Dior's Cruise 2016 show, held at the spectacular Bubble Palace just outside Cannes, the business of fashion goes inside Raph Simmons' Dior. Raph, what a beautiful setting to meet you for the first time here in Cannes. Um, thank you for taking the time to chat with me. It's a really busy day for you. Um, I guess I wanted to talk today a little bit about your journey at Dior. It's coming on three years now that you've been here. And I really wanted to get a sense um, of, of how it's going so far. It's hard to believe it's been that long. Uh, it feels like it's been a, a bit of a whirlwind for you. You know, how, how are you feeling? Yeah, it goes fast, that's for sure. It's six collections a year. Yeah. But uh, no, it's, an, it's a wonderful environment. It's a, it's a huge house. I'm not going to say it's not a lot of work because it's a massive amount of work. But it's also uh, an incredible atelier, I have to say. And um, it's, um, it's an incredible atelier because they challenge me as much as I am challenging them. And uh, in the beginning, I think it was very scary, but it was only scary because of not being very well informed about what the actual feeling is when you deal with a house on that scale. It wasn't scary in terms of how the people relate because I felt quite soon very, very comfortable. So, um, so far, so good, I would say. And I'm also patient in terms of, you know, like when in fashion, of course, you have to perform instantly. There is no time. But I'm quite patient in terms of, you know, seeing how you could kind of build something. And mm -hmm. it needs time, I think. And in that sense, I think at the end, it went very fast, way faster than I was expecting, which is, of, of course, a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah, I was going back. I was watching Dior and I over the weekend and um, reliving, you know, for me, that was that first couture show of yours. I, you know, I'll never forget that show because you could really feel this emotion and that, that film brought it all out for me again. About, but just seeing how everything happened in the background, it was, you know, kind of amazing. But I sensed that at the time, everything was really new to you. You know, the whole oh, yes. thing was new to you. Do you feel more comfortable now with all of the moving parts and the scale of this thing, as you said? Yes, it's totally different now, I have to say. What, what is shown in the movie are the actual first moments. Like when I was introduced to all the ateliers by Sydney, that was the, literally the first minute I walked into the company. Right. Because obviously we were never having meetings in the company during the, uh, you know, like the kind of conversations. And, um, and then it went so fast in a way. The weird thing is that at that moment I was pretty scared because I only had seven weeks or eight weeks, I don't remember exactly. But now sometimes we do collections in a less amount of time. But it's because you didn't know and I didn't know the nature of uh, couture either. It's quite different. So it's a different way of collaboration with, uh, with the women in the atelier and yeah. the men. Probably the biggest difference, apart from the access to the atelier and the couture at Dior, is just the scale of it as a business. You know, Jill Sander and your own brand, you know, in terms of scale, were much, much smaller. Having worked in a, in a structure like this now, you know, what have you learned about the business of Christian Dior, the business of fashion at this scale, and how it works? Well, first of all, I was attracted very much to go to that kind of scale because of its um, uh, big, big business uh, in a way, you know, because of the, the, the size of the turnover, the reach, because I think that it started to annoy me at one point that people always kept thinking that I was only interested in, you know, like the niche and the conceptual and the highly intellectual and the arty and yes, I'm interested in all that, but it was, it almost seemed at one point a challenge to reach to so much more people, to help to reach out to so much more people and to kind of, I don't know, you know, like during the tenure at Jill, I found myself also in a situation where I thought that the heritage was limiting me very much because in a way you want to respect 
but I felt like I want to you know like explore much further and that's mm -hmm. when the collection started to look way less minimal mm -hmm. you know when there was this one collection very colorful and of everybody course. said it's the couture show from yeah. Jill and but in a way you know it was I started to explore a lot of different directions I was analyzing a lot of um, mid-century uh, fashion history which I hadn't really done before because I wasn't even trained as a fashion designer so I didn't really go deeply into that I was doing a lot of that in that period and completely different from my own expectation I was very attracted to the heritage of Christian Dior at that time already um, even before you started it yeah you? because yeah 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 in the middle of the Jill yeah. thing when I was kind of looking more at, at uh, different historical brands to see where to move on with, uh, with the women and Jill. And uh, I was almost expecting me to fall more uh, in love with Balenciaga, for example, or Givenchy because of its kind of futurist, clinical, architectural kind of uh, outcome. And I did not. I think that at the end it brought me back a lot to my own past, you know, which was so much related to, you know, like a kind of landscape and a natural environment, kind of simple environment and a, a purity of, of, of things that are about beauty and femininity and, and, and nature and it almost seemed like that is now the biggest challenge. That's now, when they came ask, it was like, that's now a real big challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of maybe making uh, as a next move maybe another kind of like highly conceptual or highly intellectual mm -hmm. brand. And I thought that was uh, a relief also, mm -hmm. a relief to just, you know, like create something beautiful for a woman who is attracted by something beautiful and she doesn't need a whole book of explanation in terms of concept. I found that very relieving and I also, I don't know, I think that before that I was never really looking at it in that way. Um, so speaking of this kind of immersion or this match between you and Dior or the, the kind of way Dior approached things, what would be the words that you would use to describe kind of Raph Simmons' Dior? This, I mean, as much as you've been respecting the heritage uh, of the brand, you've also really energized it. You know, you've, you've injected this new energy into it. How do you describe kind of the new Dior in your own words? It's a, it's a tough question, but I think that the energy, the energy that people might feel I think it has a lot to do with the fact that women live their lives very different these days and we are 21st century because I think that the way people look at Christian Dior they still connect very strongly to, uh, to original Christian Dior I have to say to what it was but it's almost impossible because it was only existing for one decade and that was like mid-century uh, period. So me, I keep sometimes thinking, or sometimes it's inspiring for me to think like, what would he have been do? What would he have done? What would he? Where would he have evolved to, if he would have been sitting, you know, like in the 60s and the 70s? Like the last couture was very much about that, you know, like what if three decades come together, you know, and it becomes, it's not just anymore like the nature, the garden, the femme fleur, you know, like the bourgeoisie, all that. It's also becoming. You know, like the liberty and the experiment of the 60s and the sexuality and the kind of um, feeling of the 70s. And so it's more that I'm thinking on that kind of surface in a way, you know, like I don't think that it's, it's not good to be, I, I feel it's not good for me to go too analytical and too intellectual because then maybe it's not going to work for the audience, which is a Dior audience. It might work for a part of the audience, but as I said, it's not a niche brand and I was attracted to kind of deal with a brand which is not a niche brand. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it, it requires from the designer, and me mm -hmm. in this case, a different way of thinking. Right. And I find that a big, a big challenge because I was used to a certain way of thinking throughout now two decades, Rev Simmons and Jill for seven years. There was a system and there was a way of thinking that I wanted to kind of break out to, even if it would be, for example, criticized at first. I was ready for that. Right. Uh, you know, looking back at your collections over the past few years, I mean, I, I certainly noticed that, especially in that first couture collection, you were a lot more kind of focused on reinterpreting the codes, like the bar jacket right. and whatnot. But in, in recent seasons, it really does feel like you've been injecting 
more of your own ideas and energy into it. Where, where, do, you, where do you get that from? Where does it come from that you... That I think... Mm, sorry to interrupt. I think at first you're scared. So, you know, you hold to the heritage out of respect, but also it's a safety in a way. It gives you a safe feeling because it was, it's there, you know, it's respected. So if you hold to it, you know, it has a kind of gives you a kind of safe feeling. <laughs> and then I think that I try to now just build on the reactions of the actual woman who's buying and the feedback that I get. Oh, so what are those reactions? What, what was the feedback that you received? Well, they're quite challenged, I think, for evolution. They're quite challenged to kind of uh, see where it can go to. You know, I think that there is a lot of women out there that do not necessarily uh, think that Dior should stay exactly the way they perceived it, you know, like from that kind of era that I was discussing before. So in that sense, they like to, they like it to evolve. Of course, they like also, especially, you know, like a real Dior client, she likes to always find certain aspects. It's all will, it will always be uh, feminine. It will always have a silhouette. You know, then there is this kind of things that we all know so well and we talk about it all the time, like a link to nature, but I think that can, be complete, can become something completely different. Now here it becomes something completely different. The last one was also something completely different. It was relating to, you know, like more like a kind of animal, liberated sexual kind of exploration, the last ready to wear, you know, with Ferrushka and everybody. But still, it's still natural in a way, with the abstractions of all the animal prints. Now this one, it relates a lot to the, to, to this kind of environment, you know, like the environment of France and the south of France and how does, how does that relate to Dior in a way? Because I think that this environment is, has a kind of, um, what comes together in this environment for me is like something which is very brut and wild and rough and, rough yeah. and something which is very sophisticated and glamorous and chic. So if I think about this environment and I keep also thinking about whom he was as a personality, how he lived his life, you know, like he had this house, but he would always go, you know, like to nature, back to the south, you know, like he was somebody who was involved with art. He started being a gallerist before. So when I think about Cruz, I think about going to the south and I was thinking about this environment as a place where art, there was artists sitting here and some of these artists, their work is very, you know, like brute, like a Picasso or Matisse. And I think about their studios and their environments and how they are dressed with their aprons and, and, and at the same time, you know, like the, the, the life of, of, of people in south of France, you know, like the, the, the eating outside, you know, like a cheese and a, and a croissant and, and, and a, you know, that. But then there was also the sophisticated side of the, the bourgeoisie that moves in and who has that kind of link and confrontation with the art scene as well as, uh, you know, like the local people. Everything comes together. And I think that was a very challenging thing, also literally as well as intellectually. Literally as, uh, why, why do we come here? Why do artists come here? Why do, why, why do people come here? You know, it's like the, suns, the sunscapes, uh, earthscapes, landscapes, uh, seascapes so that also became an, an inspiration for the collection kind of in an abstract way and you know like how can all that fuse together we have a series of pieces in the collection which is a kind of collage of materials mm -hmm. and i was out for something brut like nature with with all the different kind of color settings that it could be as a sunset or as a sea set or a sunscape or a seascape but at the same time, uh, something glamorous. So we started building them up, almost kind of uh, cut very roughly and then patched together again, but out of different kind of lurexes. Because I think that it's very often about light and about coloration. Um, we started to make, there was a lot of bar shape without, okay. without being bar as how it was constructed. So most of the bar shape or let's say the femme fleur uh, silhouette like a waist and a, a fuller uh, hip is is created by pleating systems there is a lot of reference to the original christian dior again in this collection but it's very far away from that look 
but maybe from the later work in the last one and a half, two years, it's the one that refers most again to his actual architectural constructions. But as a look, I think it's very removed, very away from it, because <coughs> it comes more from the full pleat skirts and um, the very architecturally constructed huge, big, full mantors that he did. But not, there was not one Montau in collection and there was not one big full skirt in collection. Sure. So all these Montaus became, for example, little kind of dress overalls sometimes, um, uh, mini skirts even. So Montaus became mini skirts because we cut 80% away and only 20% is left over and becomes a mini skirt. So a lot of pleating techniques, a lot of kind of structure, um, big buttons. I wanted to have something not too heavy. That's why, you know, when you look into the heritage, sometimes, as much as I'm very, very overwhelmed from the look and from the technique, I find it's heavy sometimes, and I want to kind of freshen it up, mm -hmm. make it lighter, especially, I think, for a cruise and playful even. Mm -hmm. Also bringing it to this environment, I think it was important for me that it would be young, uh, not too heavy weighted, not highly conceptual, mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, like, uh, it's also kind of fun. Um, there is even references to, maybe not always literally in the clothes, but there is references to periods that Monsieur Christian Dior was inspired with. Uh, there is even references to uh, Marie Antoinette with materiali materializing of the shoes, but you, there, you might as well perceive them as uh, punk or new wave uh, shoes. The music also. Music is really important as part of your process. Yeah, I think uh, I think in, a, in an environment like this, you can start to become, uh, you can start to use bubbly music from the 70s, for example. Uh, but we use clever symbol, for example, for this show. Not all the way, but mixed with some other things. So, yeah, voila, uh, I probably forget a lot so of things. Here, it's a lot of technique. Yeah. Also, a lot of different kind of techniques we are trying out in this collection. Experimental techniques also with uh, fur. So we've been cutting fur in very thin uh, ribbons that is almost like threads, like 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 when you uh, like the thread you would uh, use when you would knit, and then they get actually knitted on a net, and out of that we made dresses, uh, and the dresses are actually transparent, and then we knit floral motifs with fur on it. Yeah, I have one last 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 question. You know, I guess, you know, I guess you know one of the one of the realities of operating in a in a big business is that um, the creative ideas then have to be commercially realized and commercially yes. successful, especially for a cruise collection. Yeah. You know, and I believe this is the first one that you're presenting in this big big way. How how do you how close are you to the the numbers and the results of what happens with each collection in order really. to get the feedback. Can you talk a bit about that? Yes, but it's also, before I came, it was my big uh, desire to succeed commercially. It was, an, it, was, it was maybe one of my biggest desires. Because I think that uh, when you're dealing with a highly conceptual brand and you know after years that you have been reaching out to a niche environment, um, like what we said in the beginning, it's a different challenge, I think. And I think that I was very aware of the um, uh, responsibility. And I think because it didn't scare me, it kind of worked. Because it, it, the collections did really well in those three years <clears throat> in terms of growth, economical growth. And that makes me very um, happy, you know, it makes me it, it is it is an experience that I find very satisfying and I didn't know that yeah. for more than 15 years. Yeah. Because I think that I used to be a kid that was always so much obsessed about what the press is going to say, what the press is going to say, what the press is going to say, and you know, like what a handful of intellectuals are going to say. And I still like that because, you know, you know me, I'm like in that world and I'm, I like that, you know, in the art world. But at, at the end of the day, I think I also came to a point now that I think, you know, fashion is... There are so many women that just want beautiful fashion, you know, right. they want, and I want to reach out and I want to see if I can succeed. And that means, sure. are they going to buy it? Are they going to wear it? Because it means a lot also. I think it means probably most, 
you know, like if they are effectively gonna wear it, especially in a house, I think, which is on that level, you know, like. Well, I can't wait to see the collection this, this evening. Thank you very much, I'll let you know, and uh, good luck. It's been Thanks. really exciting to watch as you've um, traversed this journey, so I'm looking forward to it, and congratulations.